hey guys welcome back to our channel and in this video i am going to uh, resume the series 100 important topic in organic chemistry so if you remember a long time ago i have started a series named as 100 important topics in organic chemistry and i made around 12 to 13 videos uh, in this series and then for some personal reason i could not uh, continue that series but now i will continue this series and this is going to be the 13th video i guess of that series and today's topic is very important for any exam and in general so uh, the topic is none other than the diastereoselectivity of attack on a carbonyl compound so you can see we have two compounds uh, this one and this one and in first case lithium aluminum hydride is reducing this carbonyl this is keto compound and in second case this aldehyde and uh, Grignard reagent is adding to this carbonyl group and you are getting uh, in both cases we are getting two products here we get this and this here we get this and this and uh, um, between these two one is major and the one is minor so how to predict which will be the major product and how the attack will take place that is uh, our point of discussion today and we can do it by uh, using the Felkinan model that we will discuss but before going into the Felkinan model uh, first we need to understand about uh, the nature of this carbonyl compounds so uh, carbonyl compounds has two phases and we call it topic phases okay so if you uh, take these two carbonyl compounds this aldehyde and this ketone you can see in both cases we are adding cyanide to the carbonyl compound to uh, get cyanohydrin here also and here also uh, in the first case, we are getting a stereogenic center. Stereogenic center means uh, around this center, four groups are different. But in second case, it is not a stereogenic center. So because we are getting a stereogenic center here, we are calling this carbonyl carbon atom as prochiral. Whereas uh, this is not prochiral because we are not getting any stereogenic center over here. Now, uh, the two phases of this carbonyl compound, that is the top phase and the bottom phase, they are equal. Uh, it doesn't matter on which phase you add the carbon, uh, you, you add the nucleophile, in this case the cyanide. In both cases you are going to get the same product because uh, you are not getting any, ch any chiral product. But in this case the two phases are not equal. Uh, in one uh, direction or in one phase you are getting a product and in other phase you are getting a different product. What is the difference? The difference is uh, in their stereochemistry. So basically you are getting uh, enantiomer of uh, one another. So uh, when you attack from the top phase, if you get product A and uh, if you attack from the bottom phase, if you get product B, so this A and B will be enantiomer to one another. So we call uh, the two, two phases of this uh, particular compound as uh, enantiotopic phases. But in this case, you can see in this example, this center is already a chiral center and it is attached to this carbonyl group. So when you add the mm, nucleophile either from the top phase or bottom phase, you are going to get two different products. And in this case, these two products are diastereomer to one another. So we call these phases as diastereotopic phases. So we, we have three phases, either uh, homotopic phases or enantiotopic phases or diastereotopic phases. Now uh, let us come back to this. So here because uh, one stereo center or one chiral center is already attached to the carbonyl group. So the, this makes the two phases of this carbonyl group or this carbonyl group uh, diastereotopic. Just remember that. Now before uh, going into the mode of attack, we first need to know what will be the reactive confirmation of this molecule or what will be the stable confirmation of this molecule through which the reaction will take place. So uh, for that we take this as our model compound and uh, this A and B will be the majorly contributing structure. Uh, these are the most stable structure. You can see four uh, other uh, structures are also given, other confirmations are also given in uh, below but they are very less contributing. Most of the structure uh, will be in these two confirmations, either A or B. Now, why this is so? Why these uh, confir uh, four confirmations below, they are uh, less populated? Because uh, if you look at the back carbon atom, we have phenyl group, we have methyl, and we have another hydrogen, right? So, uh, among all these three groups, phenyl is the 
bulkiest or the largest group right so um, we have to place the phenyl group away from both the oxygen and from the hydrogen and that we can do only in conformation a and conformation b you can see all these four conformation the phenyl group is either towards the hydrogen eclipsing with the hydrogen or eclipsing with the oxygen so they are uh, sterically less stable and that's why a and b are most populated conformation among all these right now we know a and b are the most populated conformation now uh, we have to see from which phase the attack is favorable on this a and b so here so uh, before that uh, i want to just say you that this is a particular example but uh, we can uh, we can generalize this for any compound any carbonyl compound with diastereotopic phases and we can classify the groups as large medium and small and we have to place the large group always perpendicular to the carbonyl carbon atom either this side or this side and medium and small they can arrange themselves right so the main thing is you have to place the large group for example in this case phenyl away from the oxygen or any other group over here so you have to place it perpendicular right so now uh, let us see how the attack will take place on the carbonyl group so uh, this is our b and this is our a if we consider b you can see if we consider b uh, attack of the nucleophile from left hand side or from the right hand side in both cases this is uh, the attack is sterically hindered okay so in right hand side is it is hindered from this methyl group in the left hand side it is from this phenyl group right so either of these two attack are uh, less feasible right so we uh, discard this now uh, in case of conformation a uh, you can see although the attack from the right hand side is sterically hindered by this phenyl group but attack from the left hand side is perfectly fine uh, because there you have only small hydrogen atom so there will be uh, no steric hindrance at all right and uh, all this attack we are following the Bargi units angle we know that uh, whenever attack takes place on carbon carbon atom it uh, follows the Bargi units angle of 107 degree why is it so I made a video on that you can check okay so we conclude that uh, attack from this side is only feasible among this all four possibilities right so first we uh, we understood what will be the correct conformation and then we uh, uh, we understand uh, what will be the direction of the attack right so now let us uh, look into this particular example so here we arranged this molecule uh, in its in its proper and uh, most uh, stable conformation and we are attacking uh, by the nucleophile from this side where it is uh, unhindered approach because because we have hydrogen over there and we are getting this product now you can easily convert this uh, newman position formula to this flying wedge projection formula to get your product and how you have to do it i made a video on that you can check in the next example you can see only the nucleophile is different uh, the principle is same it is attacking from the less hinder side and we are getting this as our product which we can convert easily to the flying wedge projection formula so this is the case of simple l, uh, l so this is called felkinan model okay this particular model is called felkinan model and you can apply it to uh, predict the outcome of uh, diastereotopic attack on a carbonyl compound now uh, let us see what will happen when we have uh, some uh, electronegative group uh, on the back carbon atom so in this example you can see this nbn2 bn means benzyl so this is electronegative group nitrogen is there so this is electronegative group so um, it doesn't matter whether this group is large or not you have to place it uh, perpendicular to the carbonyl group so you can see this will be the proper arrangement or this will be the majorly populated conformation okay uh, and on that the uh, nucleophile will attack to give you the major product as this one okay so this will be your major product now why we have to place this uh, more electronegative group perpendicular to the carbonyl group so we can uh, establish that by considering the molecular orbital diagram so this is the molecular orbital diagram you can see when we place the x that is the electronegative group perpendicular to this carbonyl group then only the pi star of this carbonyl group and the sigma star of this cx bond they can interact and they will form a new pi star plus sigma star orbital so this is the energy profile diagram and this is actually you can see this is a stabilizing situation because energy is lowering and 
as you are lowering down the energy of pi star orbital so your nucleophile can easily attack on that right so that's why you have to place this electronegative atom perpendicular to the carbonyl this is the principle this is for electronegative atom okay you have to remember that now the next thing is uh, effect of chelation on the felkinan model so we are taking the same example this one and this one as a starting material but we are using different reducing agent different means uh, you can see in both cases it is borohydride only but uh, the difference is only in the counter cation in one case it is lithium plus in one case it is zinc 2 plus and you can see the outcome is totally different uh, whatever we get here we get a different compound over here so why is the thing so in case of lithium uh, the it is following simple felkinan model you can see this is the most stable conformation and attack is taking place through the less uh, hindered side we are getting this product but when we have zinc zinc 2 plus zinc 2 plus is very good at coordinating and forming chelates so it will try to form chelates between this uh, sulfur and this oxygen group so it will drag this ps uh, phs group towards this oxygen so it makes this eclipse and then the ethyl group goes uh, perpendicular to this oxygen right so this is called effect of chelation and now uh, the borohydride will attack from the less inner side but it is now attacking from the left hand side in this case it is attacking from the right hand side but here it is attacking from the left hand side and you are getting this product so all this is happening because of this chelation Chelation cannot take place for uh, lithium, that's why it is following simple Felkinan model. But here uh, with zinc, the chelation can occur and it is following a different pathway, right? So chelation has a very important effect on the Felkinan model. Uh, this is so this is another example of chelation where uh, you have this starting material and if you have sodium borohydride sodium cannot uh, form chelation so you will get this as major product normal felkinan model but when you have uh, magnesium methyl magnesium bromide or anything like that then uh, or in this case me2mg normal me2mg so magnesium can form chelate and you will uh, mm, the reaction will go through a different pathway, chelated pathway, and you will get this as your major product. So, if you draw the model like this one, you can understand why uh, this product is forming. I am not explaining it here, but it is self explanatory, right? And this is the last example you can see uh, here also, chelation can form uh, between this phosphate group and this carbonyl group, but only when uh, cerium is there. When uh, sodium is there, chelation cannot take place and in both cases you are getting different outcomes although you are using the same starting material and same reducing agent. So only here you are applying cerium chloride and that is making the difference by doing chelation. So this is the effect of chelation on Felkinan model. So that's all. I almost covered all the examples from Clayton book and uh, some other books. So you may find some more examples in different books but the principle will remain same. Uh, I hope that this video will help you to understand the Felkinan model and how to predict the diastereoselective reaction on carbonyl group. If you want more videos like that, comment down below and also share your experience how you are feeling this 100 important topic series. And uh, hmm, we are going to launch a, a full live course on organic reaction mechanism A to Z. So if you want to enroll, uh, you can uh, follow the google form link which i will be i will give in the description section the class will uh, start from 13th of august okay so that's all thank you for watching